Now we'll move on to cover Nocardia, specifically Nocardia asteroides, another gram-positive branching rod. I don't know what it is about Nocardia, but this one's always been a real tough one for me to remember. Its symptomatology looks a lot like other bacterial or fungal infections, and I know I have a real tough time remembering to even throw it in on my differential. So before we get into it, I just wanted to say, don't forget about Nocardia. The artist that did this one really put in the extra effort to make it look awesome, so I hope it stands out in your mind not only on test day, but in your clinical training as well, so that you can be smarter than me and not consistently forget to include it on your differential. So this is a western. Everyone loves a good western, and in this particular one, there's been an argument over a card game. And I also love the title, No Card Game for Old Men. So let's start drawing out this poker game gone awry. So same as actinomyces, you should know that nocardia is a gram-positive filamentous branching rod. To remind you of this, we'll use the exact same symbol we used in actinomyces, literally. We'll take a picture of it and put it above the bar. It's a nice bar painting now. Next, we have a big point of contrast between actinomyces and nocardia. Nocardia is an obligate aerobe. To help you remember this, we're going to use our recurring obligate aerobe symbol, an air bellow. We've used the same symbol in the Bacillus anthracis video, and we'll use it again in other videos. Don't forget that gas mask in the actinomyces video. Actinomyces is an anaerobe, nocardia is an aerobe. So nocardia is found primarily in the soil. To help you remember this, we'll have a cactus pot that was broken during the fight and is now leaking out dirt onto the table. Remember that nocardia does not form spores which is opposed to the other bacteria found in soil that we've talked about, like tetany and perfringens, which do form spores. 